My second question involves manufactured housing. Can you comment some more on your enthusiasm for the underlying economics of the business, given what appears to be a commodity product with a high level of seller fragmentation, overcapacity, um, and large blowups on the financing side? And what advantage, uh, even if Berkshire's advantage is in the financing, why not stick only to the financing and not the manufacturing? Manufactured housing, you know, it is, I mean, practically everybody in manufactured housing is losing money now, and uh, Clayton is making money. They've, they've had much sounder policies in terms of how they've operated over the years. One of the things they do, most of their houses are sold through their own retail units. They have about, I think, 297 or so retail outlets of their own, and those managers are on a 50-50 profit split, basically, as I remember it, with Clayton, and they're responsible for all of the, all of the paper they generate. So unlike what was going on a few years ago in manufactured housing, where a manufacturer would sell a, uh, a house, I mean, be floor plan to a dealer, and then that dealer uh, could borrow maybe, a, if he got a, some kind of a purchaser on the note, maybe 125 or 130 percent of invoice price, if he could just create a warm body out there someplace that would give him some apparent down payment. Uh, that situation was just built for disaster. But at, at Clayton, the profit or loss off that person who, who buys the product goes till the, till the obligation is fully paid for. So if, if a dealer uh, takes inadequate down payments or sells to people he shouldn't be selling to, it's gonna be his problem. And he's gonna get the repo back, he's gonna have to sell it himself, he's gonna get the loss on the paper charge to him, and that produces an entirely different kind of behavior at the retail level than occurred with many of the other manufactured housing uh, manufacturers. But it's, it's not an easy business. Uh, it's, Clayton does it the right way. And in fact, if you read Jim Clayton's book, he, will te he tells in there about the time he bought his first home uh, in Indiana, and he tells about a little of the funny business that went in in terms of uh, how the manufacturer behaved, and he, he describes some of the systems that people use to game the financing. And those activities are coming home to roost in a huge way for both the manufactured housing companies and for the people that finance the retail paper. Clayton, Clayton did it right, basically, and they'll continue to do it right. Even so, there is such a stain over the whole manufactured housing industry in terms of financing that even Clayton is the only one that has, is able to securitize, and, and as I said earlier, they cannot securitize to the extent uh, without us. They wouldn't be able to securitize to the extent that, uh, uh, even that they could have a year ago. Uh, it's, it's an industry in big trouble. Uh, I think we'll do fine in it because I think we're in with a class player. I think they've got these systems in place that have the right incentives, which you need, all the way through the system, and I think uh, I think Berkshire will make them even stronger because we will pro we will not securitize; we'll keep it for the portfolio. The gains on securitization. The point you made is essentially uh, correct. That some of the when you see a company with lots of gains on securitization, you ought to get a little suspicious. I, I don't want to get into more detail than that because it's an accounting question. Charlie, uh, I've got nothing to add to that either. <laughs>